Josh Johnson Show. I'm Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, fellow stamp comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I I went to um, cryotherapy for the first time. Cryotherapy? Uh, yeah. Have you heard oh. of this? Uh, I, I've heard of the name. I guess I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I'm hoping this leads to you being some sort of supervillain. No, no. There's I mean, some sort of that would be great. Um, Cryo Josh out in the world. Basically, I still have a little remnants from the injury in May. Mm-hmm. Um, and so go check out the episode. Joshy hurts his boob for all the details. And so basically, <laughs> so we actually named that episode. <laughs> We're supposed to um, lower the inflammation because uh, apparently the tendon is still inflamed. Okay. And so um, I went to this cryotherapy because apparently what it does is it lowers the overall inflammation in your body. And it's without you having to take anything. It's just the extreme cold helps boost your immune system. And I'm sure there's like some white blood cell stuff happening and everything. There's like all these benefits. And the mm-hmm. only thing that I saw that's... Like the only side effect or drawbacks are turns you into a nice monster. Yeah, some people might experience a like cold sore somewhere on the body because your head is not in it. It's just the neck down. Um, okay, like an actual like like a cold sore, cold sore. No, no, just a sore <laughs> from okay. how cold they were. I guess uh, that's what I figured. But like that wording, <laughs> yeah, that wording's not great because that's what I read on the paper. So I'm, on, I'm reading, I'm reading the paper. I'm, I'm literally reading the release, and I was like, "So this cold sore thing." <laughs> and like then, big, and then like, she did what I did just your... now, where she didn't fully catch why I was like, "Cold yeah. sore." Cold and, sore. And she was yeah. like, "Yeah, because you know how sometimes you get sore from the cold." I'm like, "So that's the cold sore that you're talking yeah. about." There's nothing. Yeah, nasty Y'all might need in this to, tank. You, you might need to touch up that wording. Yeah, it sounds like I'm about to catch something. It would be better if you said "sores of the cold," like that. Even that, it sounds very medieval, but it doesn't or, sound like or, a cold sore or some soreness or stiffness from the cold. You know what I mean? Then that lets you know it's like it's just going to be like a feeling more than. Oh, or, or are they saying you might get an open sore? No, no, you wouldn't get an open sore. But okay. I guess you might get like a blister. Hmm, okay. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you get in, they tell you not you to touch it- the walls or the door because the walls in the door are like extra, extra cold. So you're already getting cold blasted on you. Okay. But you, you could potentially like, you know, like when you lick, a, you know, a frozen telephone pole yeah. or something. That's yeah. the dry cold. That's the, so, that is the walls. So they need to write you might get a Christmas storied. A Christmas story would be better and even sound more fun than a cold yeah, sore. A cold sore. Yeah. Sakes. What else could you call a cold cut? No, that's meat. You can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> can't be a cold cut. You might get a cold cut on your arm. Someone <laughs> will just throw it on you. <laughs> I didn't know I get sandwiches from these appointments. That's great. Yeah. So I did that. And honestly, I feel amazing. This really? Is, this That's is like good. I'm very scared. This is actually why I don't do drugs. I'm already addicted to the thing. I like on the on the way home, I was like, man, I should do this like twice a week. They they recommend apparently twice a week so that you get you even out with the levels of benefits of doing cold therapy. Okay. Yeah. But I was like, I should probably do it every day. Like <laughs> So is it so is it like a like you you said it's it's your neck down mm-hmm. so it's something you get into and then is it like filled with is it just like for lack of a better word like almost like dry ice like just I, like yeah i don't know what the actual there? i don't know, I know it's how not they ice, actually but. do it but they're blasting you with a very dry cold um okay so it's very cold in the tank right gotcha okay and that and that for me, I, I liked this place, but I think I might go to a different place because they have a different type of tank than I've seen before. The tank that I've seen previously, when it closes, your head is sticking out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this one, the tank was very open at the top. Um, and I don't know which one's better or if they have an effect or I don't I like obviously this place is very successful. 
the other thing is how I came to find out about it. So I guess that place is successful. But that was the only thing where I was like, I might go to a different place where I'm truly like Iron Lun. <laughs> <laughs> like you want like it wrapped around your neck? like Because I think that's the only there. way. Because what I need is my chest. And I felt it blasting my legs the whole time. Okay. And even though the rest of my body ended up getting cold, I was like, for what I need, I should almost be upside down right now. Like, I need the cold <laughs> blasting my chest. Do they have a small one that only goes around your chest? No. No place has that? No. Mm. But, yeah. So so I did that, and I... Okay, so this is... I, I don't even know how to tell this story in a way that everyone will enjoy. Because <sighs> if you're like me, you'll be... Like cringing because I was cringing, but if you're not okay. like me, then it's probably funny. Okay, so basically, I get there, and this place does a bunch of stuff. They do the cry- cryotherapy. I always want to say cryptotherapy, and in my head, that's just <laughs> a therapy for people who have lost all their money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just go to Crypto Anonymous. Yeah, that or therapy for mummies. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. We'll wink to the camera. So I get there, right? And, yeah. and when I get there, uh, <laughs> I almost walked right out. As soon as I walked <laughs> in, I took two steps in. And I saw this woman who uh, they do everything there. They do the cryotherapy. They do mm-hmm. energy shots. They do like health and all the health and wellness stuff. And they also do the rehydration IVs, right? Okay. So I walk in and immediately see a lady with an IV, and I was like, uh, nope. I like, <laughs> I know that doesn't even have anything to do with, you know, the cryotherapy I'm about to do. But in my head, I was like, I, I can't. This is why. So I, I, right. I steal myself and I just close my eyes and walk to the, uh, to the front desk. And, I'm like, hey, you know, I called ahead. You might have an appointment for me on file. My name is Josh, all that stuff, right? And as she's pulling me up and she's like, oh, yeah, we do have an appointment for you. Uh, We'll be able to start in a couple minutes. We just need you to sign these two release forms, right? So then Mm -hmm. she brings around a little, like they have a laptop that's like uh, on a stand with wheels that they just go from person to person. You fill out the the release right and as she's talking to me the lady with the iv walks up to the desk and starts talking to her like like not fully interrupting us but kind of like it like interrupting right and i was also like and obviously if you have an iv in your arm and you have an emergency please interrupt me like Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is yeah yeah. but when she walked up i just saw it again and i was like oh ah." Wait, just seeing an IV bag made you that? No, it wasn't the bag. It was the bag and her arm. It was just like, like, cause she, this woman clearly doesn't care about the IV at all. So she's just like living life, like moving arms around like she doesn't have an IV in her. But then I'm like, uh, 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 the entire time. Wow, I didn't know that would affect you that much. Every time I see it, I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. (laughs) And so now I'm squirming. And I'm like, ah, ah, <laughs> like in her face. Like I kind of felt bad about it in retrospect. Are you like, do you not like needles? Not at all. Not for a second. No. Oh, okay. So okay, I guess I didn't really least. know this about you. You didn't know so that just, I didn't like. I've told you. This is why I haven't had a physical done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I, I, you know, I know some people don't like having needles go in. Like I don't love getting needles put in, but I can handle it. Oh. I didn't know yours was so bad. Just seeing someone just, whoa. Oh, what was that? I'm thinking about it right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? See, that's like, I didn't know it was this bad. Oh. I didn't know just seeing a lady with an IV was going to fuck you up. And oh. not even seeing it like done. You didn't see it go in or anything. You just saw it already there. The, like, that was hell. And so then. <laughs> wow. And so then she's she's like talking to the lady at the front desk just waving her arm just like having a day right just like you know oh and then i already feel so much more energized so she's like uh-huh. being annoying <laughs> this, this lady's fucking playing charades right now with yeah an IV in her arm yeah first word iv right and so <laughs> i'm i'm freaking out and i'm starting to make noises in 
like in front of her. I felt bad. Like she's like talking and she's like, but then I realized she's not talking about anything. It's not like the IV is coming out or something. She's literally just like, oh my God, this stuff actually works. Like this is amazing, right? It almost feels like she's a plant from that place. She yeah, just, to like to make she just walks like... up and she's like, "I was so drunk when I came here, but now I feel totally hydrated." Yeah, and then the lady, the the desk, she's like, "I know they help a lot," and then turns to you, "You can add that on for just an extra thirty dollars." Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, oh god. And so she's next to me while she's doing it, and I'm just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> And and so then oh, I start God. making like little noises to myself. They're not they're not that dramatic, but they were like, oh, oh, like that thing, right? <laughs> and so then the lady in front is like, Are you okay? And I was like, Yeah, I'm just oh, yeah. you know, and then and then she's <laughs> but like, this you bitch know? gotta leave. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you know, the cryotherapy isn't that it's not intense or anything like you'll be fine blah blah blah. i was like i just kept pretending it was about the crowd there but i was just cringing at the lady the the lady is like fascinated by her own bag like she's just like (laughs) she's slapping it slapping the bag like a bag of wine (laughs) i hear the bubbles are good for you (laughs) oh They make you more buoyant. Yeah. I was, ooh, oh. ooh, I hated it so much. I hated it. I was, I was like getting disgusted and angry and I wanted to cry and it wasn't even happening to me. I was, oh, ooh. And, and I was like, it was like to the point where I was ready to be rude to her because she was like, she just kept talking, but now she's like not even right. talking to us. She's just talking about life yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I can't. She's probably not even that dehydrated. She just needed friends. And so then she wheels around the little computer for me, and I'm like ducking under the computer so I don't have to look at this woman. <laughs> this was like I, I was like I was like under, I, like, like trying to get like the eye line with the computer to I like, block I, her out. Yeah, I'm looking dead at the keyboard with my nose to it, <laughs> so I don't have to look at this woman because she's just like. Oh God! It was so it was so uh, gross. It was so nasty. And I, then and then it was my turn to like do the cryotherapy, and <laughs> and I go in there. Oh God! Oh, I hated it. And then I had to walk past her, and I was like, "Don't this this is a, like doesn't even make sense. This doesn't. This is how you know it's like a weird phobia." I had yeah. to walk past her, and as I'm walking. I'm like, do not trip on her stick. Do not trip on her stick. Because, like, the <laughs> stick that holds up the IV. Because in my head, yeah. I was going to trip on the stick. And me, the stick, the bag, and her were going to go flying. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, okay, just walk. Just I, I literally get, walked. You're going to trip over it. You're going to pull her. You guys are going to get tangled up in it, right? The needle's going to flatter her arm into your arm. She's going to be talking the whole time. I walked past her. Like, you know those people that are scared to cross bridges? <laughs> <laughs> I hate needles so much. I walked past a wall with an IV like I was crossing the Golden Gate with a fear of heights. Like I was just like, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down. I hated it so much. And then and then I I hated it so much I forgot I was there for cryotherapy. And so, you forgot you had something to do? I just felt like I was in purgatory. Like, I was like, I don't know how to leave, but I also... And then the worst part is that I've, like, now wasted this... Like, if I leave, I've wasted this receptionist's time, but I haven't actually paid for anything. And right. so, so then she sets me up with some socks and uh, a robe, and you, you change into the robe and the socks before you get in the tank and everything. Mm-hmm. And then... um. I, I walk to the uh, the tank in the robe and the socks, and I step inside, and then she closes it. And then, you know, she's like, you can hand me the robe. And so I, I take the robe off and um, hand it to her. And, like, when it started, I was upset. Like, when, like when, <laughs> when the cryotherapy started, uh-huh. I was like, I'm truly giving them money 
to mm-hmm. be in Chicago naked right now. That's all that's happening. Like I've, right. I've paid these people for them to put me in the dead of winter Chicago with no clothes <laughs> on, you know? Yeah. And, and even as it's happening, it like, it didn't hurt as much as I thought it would. I thought it was going to be incredibly painful. I, mm-hmm. I really did. I thought it was going to be, but apparently a dry cold and a wet cold. So like an ice bath, an ice mm-hmm. bath hurts too much for me to stay in it. Right. Like it genuinely, I'll, I'll be in it for a little bit. And it mm-hmm. it's, to me, cryotherapy is just a little mm-hmm. cheat code where it, first of all, you can't be in there more than three minutes. So it's already like, okay, oh, okay. I could handle this for three minutes, right? Right, yeah. Uh, then also the effects of it last, I think they last as long as if you would have taken the ice bath, but the ice bath, you'd have to be in there so much longer. Okay, yeah. And so it really is like a nice little life hack cheat code thing, you know? Okay. Um, so first minute, I was like, oh, this is this is really terrible. And then the second minute, I, I think I was just numb to it. Like, I didn't even feel it. And yeah, then probably. the third minute, I was like, I, I think I need to get out of here. Like, like, right, like yeah. when we were getting into the third minute, I was like, you know, I think... I think I'm healed. I think open this door. You know, like I just did not want to be in there anymore. And yeah. so then uh also I did accidentally touch the wall a couple times and it is like it's so cold, oh, yeah. it's like fire, right? Yeah. yeah um yeah. and so I know I see what they mean about the cold sores. And so mm-hmm. then uh we finish up and she hands me the robe and like as soon as I put the robe on, I'm straight up like tingling. Like I'm just right. like yeah. it, it honestly, it felt so good. And, and mm-hmm. there are some things that obviously you can't feel in life. Like when they say lowers inflammation where it's like, I guess you'll see the effects of that if you have a sort of condition and then it starts to go away. Like that's what I'm hoping right. for yeah. with my chest is that mm-hmm. the inflammation will, will drop and stuff. Um, but overall I felt like they, they say that it has, um, the ability to trigger and release endorphins and stuff, so it's a it's also like a mood booster potentially. Well, well that's why it made you feel better after all the needle stuff. It was, I felt so good. I was. It like, was good for your mental health, not just your breastal health. <laughs> and then uh, I felt great all day until just now. Uh, <laughs> But no, I felt I felt really good, and then I'm now I'm I'm definitely gonna I think I'm gonna incorporate it like if I can post workout and if not just randomly. But that was that was such a nice thing because it's also pretty cheap, you know. Like it's okay. not it's not incredibly cheap, but um, right. they have a which I guess I didn't even ask them for. That's the other way they get you probably. I was in such a good mood, I forgot to ask for the first time discount. Um, oh. Yeah. Wow. So you got to see if you get that second time discount. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they do they recommend you do it like a certain amount or every so often, or is it just? They said they recommend twice a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that what you're going to try to do, you think? I bought two more. So I bought the one that I got today plus two more or something. Okay. Um, And I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll go to that place again after I get done with my sessions. Only because. Yeah. Also, (laughs) I'm, I'm good with them doing what they got to do to make money. Like, like do all the health and wellness stuff, but just to have the person like out there, I was like, Oh, (laughs) woogaboo. Yeah. It's not a good in-store greeter. <laughs> oh, huh. Like even even a crack house has the decorum <laughs> to not have someone with a needle in their arm at the front door. I don't believe you for a second. <laughs> Just throwing I, it out there. Throwing it out there. there. I think they're going to see it and they're going to forget they have a needle in their arm. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that's, uh, that helped. And so maybe they'll be, because I know, yeah, it's been an ongoing thing for you. We've been having our every every now and then our <laughs> our Joshy boob check ins on the, on the pod. Yeah, no, it's 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 truly wild. It's like I'm 
I'm really upset that it's taking this long to heal and stuff. Yeah. Um, so the, now, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. What were you going to uh, Mine was going to be dumb. Uh, my thing was going to be very dumb. I was just going to say, so when you're in like the thing next time, you're in the big cold barrel or whatever, and then the place gets struck by lightning, so if you, of course, gain cold powers, uh, what's, what's your supervillain persona? Um, probably just like freezing anyone who does puns. <laughs> Freeze. <laughs> so you're going to go out of your way to not have a cold pun name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone who does puns, I'm just going to ice breath them frozen. Yeah. Just shh. So, <laughs> and so your, your super villain name will just be like... A man with ice powers who hates puns. He, because you won't you don't want anything even close to clever. You don't want anything close to wordplay. Everyone look out. Here comes that guy with the ice powers. Yeah. That's fine with me. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um fair enough. on the way there though, this was this is a very New York thing that I got to see. Uh someone on the subway with a needle in their arm. <laughs> close uh so i was waiting on the train to mm. to head there and this is this is like at my stop so okay. you, you just to paint the picture for you, you've been at yep. this station mm -hmm. uh this guy is walking just just went through the turnstile is walking to the platform and he walks so close to the edge not even trying to be funny he walks so close to the edge that i thought he was going to jump Right. Oh, really? Like you rarely see people that mm. close to the edge. Like his, like it looked like his foot was gonna come off of it, right? And mm -hmm. he stops and he stays right there, and then he's texting, and then the train comes, and a couple people even start moving towards him, being like, "Hey, yo, yo, yo," because the train is to coming. Get hit by right? this train, yeah. And his 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 arm, he's texting, and his arm isn't fully extended out, but it's extended out enough to be mm -hmm. a problem, right? Yeah. Train comes in. Train's actually not even coming in that fast. It's not coming in that hot to the station. Okay. But this dude, this, <laughs> this is pure chaos. This dude is texting. Train comes. A couple people are like, hey, yo, 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 right? Mm -hmm. uh, train passes him, knocks his phone out of his hand, right? Yes. So knocks just the tip. Like, it must have just hit the tip because the phone flies out of his yeah. hand and onto the track, right? And okay. then this dude <laughs> screams, rears back, and then punches the moving train. And then leaves. <sighs> and I was like... Yeah, you've you've like essentially subbed up New York in a moment. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta punch a train because it was this dude's fault, you know. Yeah, train didn't do yeah. anything crazy. Train no. didn't hop onto the platform for a no. second and slap his no. phone out of his hand. No, train did the one thing trains do, which yeah. is be on tracks. Yeah, is to roll along those tracks. It's very easy to not get hit by a train because you know where they're gonna be. This dude had his arm out just enough. Because cause looking back, I'm surprised that his arm didn't get taken off, you know? Right. But that's yeah, also that just a close. testament to how, like, he was close but not. Because he was holding his phone, like, he really was holding his phone at the ends of his fingertips like this. Okay, so, like, wait, yeah. And then he's, because especially, too, if you're already, like, way, like, at the end, and then a lot of people, when they look at their phones, are looking down. He's lucky he didn't get fucking hit in the head. Yeah, yeah. And so the way that he's holding his phone is like he's handing the train his phone anyway. Yeah. And I mean, so, this man doesn't deserve a phone is what it sounds like. So it flies out of no his sympathy head. For him. <laughs> flies out of this man's head. Flies mm -hmm. like onto the track. This dude, ah, punches the train <laughs> and then walks back <laughs> through the turnstile and leaves. Well, and like, if he's punching a moving train too, that punch isn't gonna feel good. That's gonna like carry your hand. A t you know what I mean? You yeah. just hit it for a second. You're gonna yeah. Especially if you get... punch one of the doors, it's taking you with it. Yeah. And then he just left. Yeah. That must have been him just in that moment being like, "Well, whatever I was doing is over now." <laughs> I guess we don't need a Sunday. Off to the phone store. <laughs> I'd like to think he just bought that phone. <laughs> 
That'd be great if he like just came from <laughs> like an Apple store. He, and that's why he's holding it so far out. He's like, why is there no home button? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it flies out of his Boop. hand down the track. It's even better that the train hit it that way, almost like a <laughs> like a high school junior knocking it out of a freshman's hand. Just like slap. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my train station, nerd. You know what's really sad is that there are some forms, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, bullying is bad and we should not bully or be bullied. Mm-hmm. There are some things when I look back at high school that were done that I was like, I was mad at the time. But as mm-hmm. an adult, I can look back and be like, that was funny, though. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, like I remember yeah. one time I was talking to my friend, and she she was walking away, and as she walked away, she slapped the books out of my hand. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> to her point, right? So that's already mm-hmm. once again, like you said, classic bully move, right? Yep. Yeah. And that's I did school. That's one one of those things that will never go away. Yeah. Already perfected. That's bullying that was around before backpacks. You know I mean? Hell, that might have even been around before books. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> and so so then I was I was holding my book. She slapped him on my hand. And, you know, I was all mad and everything because I was one of those kids that instead of just having a binder, I would put the, um, like, pop quiz or, or test papers or whatever in whichever chapter of the book I was on at the time. Does that make oh, sense gotcha. what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I kind of feel you. Like, I you would you put it to like your book would just get filled with stuff to like go with each section. Okay. So my my basically my books were booked marked by my tests. Gotcha. See, I used to do that, but it was generally where we were at, but like with the notebook I used for that class. So mm-hmm. I'd just be like, that's where it is. But and so mean. so then she slaps the books out of my hands. The books fly out, and then they open on the way down, so papers go flying everywhere. So now, mm. not only did you knock the books out of my hands, but you messed up my system, right? <laughs> you knocked the book out of my hand, and then the book exploded. And then, and then I remember turning around and being like, what's wrong with you, right? Mm-hmm. And she was like, I had to. You were holding them like a girl, right? And okay. when when she said that, like it, it I didn't get it at the time. I didn't get mm. it for maybe three more weeks until one day <laughs> I really did see all the guys carrying their books, like with the hand under the on books the side. and on the yeah. side. And kind of like, like a football a little bit. Yeah, yeah like a football. And the girls were hugging them to their chest. And I was like, oh, I really was standing there hugging my <laughs> books to my chest while I was talking to her. And she was like, she was like, you made it too easy. Because if you, if she was like, if you had been holding them like a football and I slapped mm-hmm. it, I would have, I, you might have been able to catch them or whatever. But she was like, they just went through your arms. I just saw oh, so an opportunity she, she and just, I took it. She just it. hit the top of it. She and hit just the top of the down. books okay. and they all flew down. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty I good. looked like, I probably looked like she slapped the books out of Harry Potter's arms because the way that the papers <laughs> fell and flew <laughs> Was like the books had wings that were coming off. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. I, 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 I'm disappointed in myself for how enjoyable I find it to just knock something out of someone's hand. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's so childish. I know it's the worst, but like to especially especially something that you know is not going to break or whatever, and someone is just holding. I, I'd still do it. I do it to adult friends if they're mm. holding a notebook. I'll just slap it out of their hand because it's funny, and I know it's dumb. I wanna? knock Jess's phone out of her hand all the time when she's just sitting on the couch looking at Facebook. Or I'll just slap. She gets so mad at me, but it's just, it will never not be funny to me. One of the one of the most pimp moves, you know, like those things in in high school that a kid does that makes them legendary. You know, mm-hmm. one time I was hanging out with some kids after school. We went to Sonic. Right now, you do you have Sonic? Uh, not like nearby we have there's some in iowa but, but you just like know really. what sonic is right yeah i know what sonic okay. is. i've been to a sonic yeah, so yeah. he had got the popcorn chicken from sonic okay mm-hmm. and he had a piece of popcorn chicken in his mouth and he was we we're sitting outside in the little you know how they don't have that much outdoor space but they at least every sonic has that one or two outdoor space seating like uh picnic tables yeah, yeah. okay yeah so we're sitting on those 
and he's so excited. He'd been talking about the popcorn chicken the whole time, and I guess it really was <laughs> low, low key annoying. And so he finally gets the popcorn chicken. He grabs one of the biggest pieces and goes to put it in his mouth, and then another kid like like through his fingers that are pinched like this around the chicken, right? So mm-hmm. through them, the other kid slaps his hand up. So he perfectly launches the chicken between his fingers, right? Mm -hmm. So he slaps it out of his hand. That kid looks up. (laughs) And is like, is so shocked that there's this much evil in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Looks up and then just stares at it and then catches it in his mouth. Fucking legend. King mode. Like, I, I don't even know... If you need to get your GED after this, yeah, you know I mean, like I think no, you can just tell now. people that happened, yeah, and they'll be like, "We need to hire him immediately." The second you said he knocked the chicken out of his hand, that's what my brain. That's how I wanted it to end. Yeah, I'm like the coolest thing would be, is he caught in his mouth, and I was I was sitting here while you were telling that. I was hoping <laughs> this the kid whole time this would happen. Looked up. And had enough time. This is how hard this kid, the other kid, hit it. He had <laughs> he enough time. Launched it in the air like a rocket. Yeah, he had enough time to look at him and look hurt. He straight up October skied that chicken up there. <laughs> he had enough time to look at him, look hurt, look up at the sky, clock it, and then move his head just right to catch yeah. it in his mouth. Yeah, get that's it. You do that. You get a scholarship to play whatever sport you want. Hey, Doesn't matter. You should be playing something. If I if I slap. The popcorn chicken out of somebody's head and they caught it in their mouth, I'd be like, God is real. All right. Like, I'm going to have to change my ways because clearly. Yeah. I would just look at them and be like, I work for you now. Mm-hmm. You beat me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it That's was the- honestly like we, you know, those moments. I mean, you, you know, from, from teaching and stuff, but those moments that, organically like group think right yeah make you scream and run we all scream and ran yeah. like he had a gun like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you get so excited by what you just witnessed your your body can't even contain itself you have to do something with the energy and the best this thing you kid, can do is just run and yell because you witnessed a miracle he didn't even say he was gonna do it he wasn't like hey everybody no. hold up give me a second give me a second let me prove no oh man this kid that's one of those ways you get like a nickname that sticks with you for 50 years after that mm-hmm. like that's that's beautiful yeah right there right there that's the beauty of the universe yeah if you see somebody calling somebody pops who's only 32 <laughs> Oh damn! Being a young kid named Pops—that's actually kind of awesome. And that's the reason. <laughs> Shit, that's cool as hell. <laughs> I think even the people who try to act like they're above everything would be like, "That is actually pretty cool." You know those people who you tell something and they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah. I guess that seems kind of yeah. dumb." You know, even yeah. those people. Oof. Like to me, this no. is not a "you had to be there" story. This is like. In what world does someone slap something so small perfectly out of your hand, launches it into the sky, Mm -hmm. and then you have the, like, the strength of character and the calm (laughs) (laughs) to tilt your head a little bit to the right, find it. Like, that that means he has the eyes of a pilot in World War II that didn't have all the, like, fancy computers to tell him where the other planes were he had to eyeball mm-hmm. it and hope he wasn't yeah. just shooting a dark cloud right yeah this he kid, just knows how to bomb that factory from he can clock it from from the sky this kid was like if i move my head enough if i open my mouth enough because it was also a big piece as well yeah this wasn't like a little bitty nugget that's yeah that's not a you had to be there story that's a i wish i had been there story yeah because just hearing about it excites me if i'd have seen it i would be a different man today (laughs) (laughs) maybe that's why i really believe anything could happen because i saw that kid i think turn his head a little bit (laughs) and catch that in his mouth yeah you that's you have a little more sense of uh, magic in the world than i do and it may be because of that moment 
Man. That's that's where you and I split. Because <laughs> one of us got to see that and one of us didn't. Mm. God damn. God, that's cool. Next time we're together, we're going to try to recreate that, okay? Because it wasn't. slap chicken on your hand and you're going to try to catch it in your mouth. There's just going to be chicken all over the floor. <laughs> Oh, for sure. We're going to ruin that hotel room, but we're going to do it. The, and the fact that, like, it wasn't a light tap, you know? I mean, it's honestly, it sounds like he hit it hard enough to really send it, so he's. it's also really lucky he hit it straight up. That's what I'm saying, honestly, yeah. If you're hitting yeah. it with that force, too, you'd probably just be launching it at a weird angle. You'd think you'd be launching it behind you to say that you started with your hand down and you did to one really, of yeah. these. Yeah. Oh, man. That's the other thing that will never be recreated. Not just the clocking it and the catching it is yeah. the launch being straight up. Yeah. You'd have to try so hard. Yeah. That's no, that's I don't believe in God, but like that would get me close. <laughs> that would get me close. <laughs> Seeing that I'd be like, hmm, someone's someone's up there. Hey, hey, some things are fair. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, sometimes life is just great. God damn. That'd be cool. So you water bottle flipping kids, you ain't shit. <laughs> that trend that ended eight years ago. Yeah, make that make that water bottle the size of your thumb <laughs> and pitch it straight into the air <laughs> and catch it down your gullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Although there was a real science to the water flipping, because it really did depend on how much you filled up the bottle. Because oh, sure. I, I could see, I saw one guy, this was like online, so it's not like I was there. But there was mm -hmm. one guy who got the bottle to flip three times before it landed perfectly. And nice. I was like, that's the real skill to like get, yeah. like launch it and have it do multiple flips and then land. Because like the one flip is impressive, but I don't know. It, Everyone got good at it from everyone trying to post them doing it. Yeah. But it was fun, though, to have a moment in time where just every every teen was quasi-obsessed with physics for just a second. <laughs> yeah, that was that was maybe was one of the last trend. good ones that we got. Because the next one was eating Tide Pods. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, what a wholesome trend that yeah. was. The next one That's was true. like, hey, ruin your school. Like like yeah. act, like actually break stuff and cause millions of dollars in damage. The next one's yeah. gonna be like, hey, punch your grandma in the face. <laughs> well, yeah, and right before the water bar flipping was like planking, which didn't really make sense. Wasn't quite, you know what I mean? Even the so planking like, was, yeah, it was like fine. It was like it was fine, but know. it was not interesting. But you know, yeah, some people got hurt, but then they were just like planking in places that weren't sustainable and stuff. Like yeah. the the water bottle challenge wasn't hurting anybody, but now you got like. You got stuff. You actually have them faking challenges now. So now you'll see a, a, yeah. a thing trending where it's like kids on TikTok are doing this. And then you actually talk to people who are on TikTok and they're like, no one is doing no, that. No one's doing that. One The NyQuil chicken. <laughs> yeah. One, one local newscaster was shown one video by a friend. It, it had 12 two. likes. And he yeah. was like, we have to warn the people. The new dangerous trend that your teens are getting into. Yeah, it's always that shit. Is there one right now? Is there a new one right now? Any new dumb trend like that? I don't know. I'm the the NyQuil I'm, I, chicken. Is that the new one? That's old. So that, it's it's old. Like it's is not that real. Just putting NyQuil on chicken. Yeah, it's, it's not real. Okay, it's not real. good. That's good to hear. Yeah, but it's baking NyQuil in the chicken. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I know you said it's not real, but what? Uh, uh, why? I think that this person got what they wanted. I think this person who made the thing was trying to was to just trying to do a fake viral a fake thing. viral thing, and then it did gotcha. take off because there's only one video of someone doing it. At least with oh, the okay. other ones, with with all the other dumb trends like Tide Pod, well, all even, stuff like that. Well, even the Tide Pod one though wasn't as big as everyone acted like it was. I feel like a lot of people did it. 
Like I, I saw lots of videos of people doing it. Did you? Okay, because yeah. I never saw anybody do it, but I heard a lot of people talking about it and talking about the kids these days. Because back in our day, we used to. Now, burr, burr, to be fair, shit. a lot of people were half-heartedly doing it. So some of the videos I saw was people like biting it and then it's squirting and then freaking out. It wasn't right. like, oh, <laughs> yeah, hmm. Yeah, that that's one that I think I do agree that it blew up more than people were doing it. But I did. I saw quite a few videos of people actually doing it. And I was like, oh, geez. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Do you remember when the one thing was like the cinnamon challenge, like eating a spoonful of cinnamon? I heard there were rumors like people died doing that, but I don't know if that's true either. I don't know if people died, but I will say you can asphyxiate from how like hard it makes you cough and not being able to catch your breath and stuff yeah but yeah yeah, i remember we all did the cinnamon challenge one day at there were two that we did there was a day Mm -hmm. that was so slow at the restaurant that we each tried the cinnamon and we were like two people did it so i think we must have been doing it wrong because it wasn't as impossible as people were making it right Mm mm-hmm um, I think for effect, people were putting too much cinnamon on the spoon. Well, people were too much, putting too much on it, and then the big mistake, you can't breathe in when you're putting it in your mouth. That's where people are fucking up. They're going to, and then that, you're going to suck in some cinnamon. Yeah, you also can't move your tongue. Like, that dusts up the cinnamon as well. So mm-hmm. when I did it, so I twice I did it without coughing or anything. And it's like you put... You put it in your mouth, and then you just let it sit. Let it get wet. That makes sense now, too, that you were just eating spoonfuls of cinnamon. So that's why just drinking a bunch of uh, pumpkin spice creamer didn't didn't bump you at all. <laughs> what are you talking like, about? You're like, you're like, shit, I eat spoonfuls of cinnamon. What, what does that have to do with anything? The creamer is cinnamon flavored. It's pumpkin spice. There's cinnamon in that. Nutmeg and shit. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. T- don't try to act like there was no connection at all. I'm not trying to act like anything. I didn't know what you meant. I was like, wait, how does this help me drinking pumpkin spice? Because you're used to just going ham on some cinnamon. You ate two spoonfuls, you said. Yeah, but these are wildly apart. These are years apart. <laughs> I had two spoonfuls of cinnamon when I was in high school. <laughs> and now know, you're man. like, yeah. And then years later, your tongue is still dead. For just trying to just trying to make some callbacks for the fun. I love when you get pissed off when I bring up things that the audience <laughs> likes about stories. I'm not stories pissed off that, at all. <laughs> when I, I try to make callbacks about things that our audience <laughs> enjoys and you get really annoyed when I bring I'm, them up. I'm not annoyed at all. I'm literally, at first I didn't know what you were talking about. Now that I know what you're talking about, I'm like, oh yeah, but that's still so far away. I don't know how it would have helped me. It's like being a swimmer in high school, but then like after college, you're like, ah, I used to swim, used to swim real fast. Now I'm just a my guy who can swim. But, okay, I don't think that really applies to what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, like if I had, if I had drank the pumpkin spice. Mm-hmm. In high school, I think sure. I'd, I'd be fully with you. I'd be like, yeah, I am knocking back loads of cinnamon. So, of course, well, I'm not going to. I didn't gonna... know it was high school. You just said at work. No, no, at the restaurant. High school. At the restaurant. I didn't know you worked at the restaurant only in high school. You said the restaurant. Oh, oh, I thought you knew. I Listen, believe it or not, <laughs> I don't go throughout my whole life thinking about how your life planned out. You know, what jobs you had when. I feel like I've said it many times. <laughs> you said you worked at a restaurant. I didn't know it was only in high school. It was it was in uh, high school and college. So some of college. But yeah. And you drank pumpkin spice creamer only a couple years after that. I wasn't that far off. Years, though. It was a joke. <laughs> it was a fucking joke. You get so touchy about the pumpkin spice shit you're, now. You're saying I'm touchy, and I'm laughing. You get, no, I know, but you always, anytime, no, lately, anytime I bring up the pumpkin spice shit, you always get like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Like, you get so, and it's like, just right now, it's the fall, too. I'm getting messages from, I'm getting tagged and shit about pumpkin spice because of you. Yeah, no, I am, too. <laughs> yeah, I feel, it's like, a running, I feel like they're tagging it's a both of us, running, but they message independently. 
They do. They do. And I it's funny and I appreciate it. It's a running gag. And now you when I bring up the running gag, you're like, and what does that have to do with anything? Why are we even talking about this? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't about. even like it that much. I feel like you're characterizing it. I think that I'm not doing that. No, this this exact thing happened like a couple episodes ago, like not that long ago, where I just referenced the pumpkin spice thing and you were like, what does that even have to do? <laughs> It's the only time you give me like aggressive pushback on a joke. It's now when it's about the pumpkin spice creamer. I don't know if I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, how convenient. Uh, but yeah, you put the cinnamon on your tongue and you just don't move it, and then yeah, I don't it'll give it'll a shit get anymore. it'll get Shut wet. Up. It'll get wet, and then you can just swallow. Uh, it's the big old big old helping a wet cinnamon. Also, the crackers. Have you ever done the saltines, that challenge? What's the specific challenge on that? I'm Is pretty like, sure. Like I can't remember if you have to eat six or you have to eat ten, but you have to eat uh, that amount of saltines in a minute. And it mm-hmm. what just like the cinnamon, it dries out your mouth so your much mouth that dry, you can't yeah. chew and, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever do that one? Uh, I don't I don't think I, I did, no. Oh. Uh, that one was one I really couldn't do. And I tried it every which way. I tried to eat them one at a time and keep the mouth wet. And then I've mm-hmm. also tried to like eat three at a time to get it over with. And either way, at minute, like, I mean, at like 45 seconds, you're just, your mouth is so dry, it's not moving. Do you think we've peaked as a species? Maybe, but I don't. I don't think so though. This because is, this is what we got right now. <laughs> no, no, because countries that like countries like China that only um, promote educational and good right. spirited TikToks don't have these problems. They have other problems. I mean, yeah, but like <laughs> the the exact problems we have of like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, famous. It's like that's not a thing in a lot of other countries the way it is here. Right. Right. Yeah. Because here we all just want to get paid for being ourselves. That's actually. By the way, you can join our Patreon. (laughs) That's actually what happens. Um, A lot of celebrities now do go to very specific parts of Europe because they have no celebrity culture. They really do treat you like a regular person. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't. For sure. They'll they'll tell you that they saw you on something, but they won't Mm -hmm. freak out. It just doesn't even occur to them. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty no, no. sure and, and I, Norway is that way or something. Somebody was telling me I, that Norway, like some of the Scandinavian countries, don't have that at mm. all. Oh, really? That's what they said. I don't know. They always get ranked as like being happy as fuck over there. That's also probably what it is, too. Is like, yes, you you end up seeing like Matthew McConaughey or, or Sylvester Stallone, but you're also so happy in your life that you're just like, hey, I... I <sighs> I saw you in the movie Mud, and you're really mm. good. Um, do you want some ice cream, or like, do you want? I'm, I'm just yeah. doing really well, and <laughs> this is a great ice cream shop. Like, that this would, is I like, would, <laughs> I would love that interaction. Hey, I saw you in the movie. I'm doing really well. <laughs> I'm doing really well. So unrelated. I'm doing great. Do you? Are you hungry? Because my friends yeah. and I are about to go out to eat. If you want to come, I see you're by yourself, which must suck. Yeah. I don't have that because I have a great support <laughs> I'm, system. I'm surrounded by love over here. I'm <laughs> surrounded by family and friends who care about me deeply. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, because we all have health care, we don't mm-hmm. have any sort of like weird bitterness that we haven't worked out. Mm-hmm. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Do you? you I've you hungry or never? I've never hyperventilated. It's great to see you. <laughs> It's it's really really nice to meet you. Some people might be nervous meeting you because they don't have enough fulfillment in their lives, yeah. and I don't have that at all. Because I don't, um, I don't know if you've heard about our government and and country, yeah. but we tend to handle things pretty well. Yeah, frankly, you should be nervous to meet me. Mm-hmm. Just because I'd be nervous if I was you, because I if I were you, I'd be coming to a country with no health insurance of my own. Oof. I'd meet a I'd meet a person like me and be like, man, I'm nowhere that happy, and that'd probably mess up my day. Anyway, yeah. see you later. And you're like great rich day. or something, right? <laughs> You'd seem very wealthy. But I have the wealth of family and friends. It is crazy that it took you being as wealthy as you are to get where I am as not a wealthy mm-hmm. person. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been happy like way longer than you. You may not even be happy now because you're worried about not being rich a decade from now. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Do you want a picture with me? Yeah. Do you want a picture with a happy guy? Yeah, so you can look at it sometimes and com just compare yourself to how, how sad you look next to me, a very happy person. I'm, I'm just wondering, you know. Uh, anything else, or do I just mailbag it? Yeah. Well, let's open up the mailbag. Uh, let's do a review first. This one, uh, this is a five star review on Apple Podcasts. This is from Ballantine Nine K, and the the title of it is "Worth Dealing with Apple Podcasts." Uh. I hate the Apple Podcast app, and I took the time to reinstall it just for this. Well, thanks. Uh, I have gone through the entire catalog in the last few weeks, and it has me laughing like a maniac. Both Logan and Josh have great energy to bring to the show. Each episode is like a wheel of random insanity as we listen to how Josh makes simple choices <laughs> into harrowing escapes from his own bad choices. Uh it deserves ten internet points for each time they make each other laugh. I hope to catch them when they do shows in Chicago. Now, what? Yeah, what can you spend internet points on? Um, more internet, like maybe faster internet. Oh, see, now that'd be something. Now, maybe the that. internet is literally so fast that you can't, you can't slow it down. Like, as, like as soon as you think it, it happens. As soon as you think what it happens. As soon as you think about what page you want to go to, you're on it. See, you now this I don't like because now you're now you're making the internet read my mind. Yeah, it, it almost feels like it's reading your mind because as you're having the thought, it goes to the page. Now I don't want these points. I was excited at first, but now I'm these points are very points. stressful. It's no problem. <laughs> okay, Josh can, Josh can have the points. <laughs> really rack up those internet points. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to, th yeah, could you, could you, could you spend internet points to create a new trend or challenge? Oh, yeah. Good question. I feel like yeah. that would be, yeah. Like, ooh, we better do this guy's challenge. Look how many internet points he has. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll give us some. Yeah, this guy This guy knows how to get points. Yeah, this so guy knows how to get So let's follow his trend. Yeah. From this trend, we'll gain points. It's, it's like a ooh. pyramid scheme I've created out of internet points. I think we already do it with money. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this guy's a lot of money. We should probably just do what he says, and then maybe we'll get some of his money, or maybe we'll mm. be able to get our own money like him. And then you yeah. buy the book, and it doesn't help you in life at all. Okay, fair. Okay, so then I don't know. Can I like like an arcade? Can I just buy candy with it, or like a like a like a Tootsie Roll, or like a little army guy? Can I do that with the internet points instead? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, if you, if you if that's how if that's what you want to do with them. It just seems like maybe a waste. I just don't want to leave them on the table, you know? Yeah, that's fair. I don't know when I'll come back to this internet again. <laughs> to this Dave and Buster's, yeah. <laughs> this this online Dave and Buster's. Mm -hmm. Oh, an online Dave and Buster's would be sad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like a VR Dave and Buster's. A VR Dave and Buster's would be a huge bummer to like do the punch out machine and it doesn't go that far but you're like go that far. how was i supposed to do better i can't hit it <laughs> the game you really want to play is broken mm -hmm. there's just kids running around yeah <laughs> the server never checks back in with you just a really accurate dave and buster sim can someone make that can someone make a very accurate dave and buster simulator <clears throat> uh let me see Let's grab an email here. This one here is from <laughs> Jade. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one of those ones where like the name of the email was I'll I'll say kind of an intense concept, but then at the bottom they signed it. So I went back down to check. So that's this is from Jade. <laughs> that's completely fair. Um but this is called Sleepwalker. Hi, Josh and Logan. I listened to the episode about sleepwalking yesterday and felt a bit called out. I realized that I sleepwalk around the age of 10 and uh, I'm in my 30s now. It's usually something like opening or closing a window, turning a fan or heater off or on, 
changing clothes or getting blankets, etc., eating spoonfuls of cinnamon, that kind of stuff. I added that last one. Uh, as, <laughs> as uh, etc., as well as trips to the bathroom. In my 20s, I realized that I also sleep eat. This wasn't brought on by too much inebriation because I I was sober when hold on because I when was sober for over 2 years and lived alone. Okay. Uh, let me take that sentence again. This wasn't brought on by too much inebriation because I was sober for over two years and lived alone. I once woke up to clear evidence that I had made and, parentheses, must have ate a whole sandwich in my sleep. I mean, you know, I think that that level of alarming is based on the size of sandwich, I think. Yeah, because if it was a foot long, you have a problem. Foot long? If it was a party sub? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But if it was like... Like, like what was left of a panini yeah that's not terrible you don't gotta feel too bad but yeah if you if you ordered and ate a party sub in your sleep uh this has only caused a real problem once although recently waking up with a bottle of ranch and a roll of toilet papers on my windowsill and no explanation was a little harrowing Mm -hmm. what makes this such a such a scary thing is that you for free for sleep and for free are having full drunk blackout hangover experiences. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You're having those like yeah, all having... you did was go to sleep. Someone else would have had to drink the entire bottle. Yeah. Someone else would have missing time. Yeah. You're just regularly going to sleep mm-hmm. and then waking up with a bottle of ranch and roll of toilet paper on your window sill. And like a sore knuckle. <laughs> And my face painted like a tiger. <laughs> yeah, I think I what? may have beat the shit. shit out of someone. Shit. Did I get into a fight at a carnival? Mm-hmm. Shit. About six years ago, I was out of town and staying with a friend of a friend, a very sweet retired vegan couple. <laughs> they woke up with a horse head in their bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I made, I made them a full, like, hog roast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they came down to it on their counter with an apple in its mouth. Uh, they had a guest bed and bath and were always ready to offer a home-cooked meal or fruit from their garden. So when I broke their TV in my sleep, I was understandably extremely ashamed. I was dreaming that I was trying to pull open a very heavy door. Unfortunately, I was acting that out in the room, and the door was a tall, heavy dresser with an old box TV on top. Oh, a box TV, too. That's a, those are big. Yeah. Those are heavy. Yeah. That's back, that's back when TVs had weight. I woke up when the TV fell face first and shattered. Damn, you must have dropped it, too, because those things are hard to break. I swept up all the broken glass and waited with dread for the morning, afraid of angering the most hospitable people I'd met. This ended up being a beautiful lesson in forgiveness for me, as the wife told me that they'd wanted to update that TV for years, but wanted to wait until it didn't work anymore. Well, it didn't work anymore. I have stopped keeping junk food readily available in my kitchen, so when I wake up and realize I had slept eight, it was usually fruit or something healthy. Sometimes I think about keeping a security camera so when I see what the hell I do at night, but I quickly realized it would feel like watching the Paranormal Activity movies. That was going to be my my follow-up things like, I don't know if you'd want to watch that. Also, having loud foods is a very good idea. Like having just carrots. If I'm going to like sleep eat, it's going to yeah. be something that's going to wake me it's up. Gonna, it's going to be carrots and Pop Rocks. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I keep near my bed. Uh, take care and sleep well. Thank you, Jade. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I think about like actually watching yourself sleepwalk. That would feel spooky, even if you know you do it. You're watching you not being you. Yeah, like not in control of you. Yeah. And then, what if say you see something else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't want to accidentally become a ghost hunter. It would be funny if you were tracking your sleepwalking and then you saw a ghost. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. There's just demons in this house. Like, oh, okay. I just wanted to see. I just wanted to see where I kept hiding the butter. So every I time did I sleep eat walk. that bag of popcorn, but uh, the pentagram was not me. <laughs> that was not me. I was blaming myself. Okay. Uh, also, too, I think the you know them saying like, oh, we were gonna replace it anyway. I think that's. I think that was them saying that out of fear. Mm. 
that was them just being like, oh, we don't want to yeah, anger this person, you're so they don't clearly little and strong, <laughs> <laughs> and we don't we don't want to get strangled in both of our sleeps. I'm kidding. Well, that's good. It turned out the best way possible then. Yeah. To, to to spike a TV on the ground like you just won the Super Bowl. Or lost. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Well, thank you so much for listening to the Josh Johnson Show. We had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We're going to be posting clips of the show. You can also find me at Josh Johnson on Twitter and Josh J Comedy on Facebook. And if you're looking for Logan, you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. And if you want to get into our mailbag, those are the two ways to do it. You can uh, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, or you can email us, joshjohnsonshow at gmail.com. And if you want bonus content and want to contribute to the show, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash joshjohnsonshow. We have bonus podcasts and video stuff and uh, replays of uh, virtual live shows that we've been doing throughout this year so uh, head on over there and check it out all the links and everything are in the episode bio so you everything we've mentioned right there it's all happening it's all happening it's all happening and it's all clickable mm-hmm 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 stop stop okay. hey Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel. Hit the bell notification because apparently it's the only way YouTube will tell you that something happened. And just tell a friend. That's the biggest thing you could do. Just tell one person in your life that you like, maybe you don't like, that this video happened to you. We release the podcast every Thursday on all the podcast apps, so you should find us there and subscribe on those and comment and leave reviews and whatever on all of them. And also, if you want bonus stuff, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson Show. We have bonus podcasts and videos and stuff there, and uh, we'd love to see you.